One of the best ways to exercise for longevity is to lift weights. All right, let's talk about Who this. Who would have known? Yeah, you, it, you know, when we talk about longevity, or should I say when longevity and exercise are talked about in mainstream uh, news or even studies, what they typically talk about is uh, cardiovascular activity, right? Just being active. Right. Well, we now have studies to support what we've known for a long time, which is that strength training has profound effects on longevity. And here's something in, even more interesting. A new study came out comparing or showing the effects of, of uh, resistance training on longevity. And, and by the way, this is these were everyday average people, whether they did body weight, resistance training, or gym type resistance training. They, they put that all together. So it's not like these are hardcore bodybuilders or whatever. They're just doing some form of strength training. And here's what they found that was different between the longevity benefits of strength training versus the longevity benefits of aerobic or cardiovascular training. Mm. Reduction in cancer risk. Oh, wow. Strength training had a significant reduction in cancer risk that we don't see necessarily. There's this great book called uh, uh, Resistance Training Revolution. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of that. Stupid, shut up. Yeah. Guy's yeah. a little, the guy that wrote it's a little douchey, but I, I mean, he's spot on with some of the things that he talked about. Yeah, yeah. no, it shows. So check this out. This is what the study says. That the, so this is the largest study to compare the mortality outcomes of different types of exercise. Strength training based exercise had a 23% reduction in risk of premature death by any means and a 31% reduction in cancer related death. So uh, it's vital when it comes to cancer. And uh, again, what do they attribute that to? Uh, uh, in the terms muscle? Of the protective, uh, well, yeah. Um, but like in terms of the protective tissue with, around your organs, like what? Uh, that is a very good question. I don't know. I right? think it would be more metabolic related. Wouldn't yeah. you think that? I would think I so because uh, building muscle is one of the most effective ways to improve insulin sensitivity. It's, right. a, it's almost a guaranteed way to do so. Like they, they've done studies on the severely obese mm -hmm. and they'll have them gain some muscle, not lose any weight. And we'll see these great improvements yeah. in insulin yeah, in sensitivity. In terms of balanced hormone profiles and everything else that comes with strength training. It, it could be, but also, you know, the, through the process of, of, of breaking muscle down and building it, the body does release a lot of these kind of hormetic uh, compounds that, you know, if you looked at them at face value, for example, if you lifted weights and then studied someone's blood right afterwards, like, oh my God, that's damaging. Look at all the, the damage markers and infl inflammatory markers. But I think that that's part of the balance that keeps you healthy and living a long yeah. time. And that may be why it's well, anti-cancer. And to, if you think of the aerobic side of it, like inevitably you're going to hit repetitive stress issues, uh, which are going to come up. And on top of that, the oxidative stress. So those two factors alone, uh, you know, would, would seem to kind of pull it down a bit versus like strength training gives you a bit more ability to continue moving and, and continue that movement pain-free. Yeah, and, good point. And then here's something else, and this is not, uh, what they said in the study. This is my own speculation, and I I had somebody very close to me who slot who you know over a year and a half uh, slowly died from cancer. And watching that, and then researching it during that period, and talking to cancer doctors, oftentimes what kills people is the treatment and their inability to continue to lose weight, their inability to continue to waste away. Mm. Well, let's say you go into because it said cancer-related death. It didn't say cancer necessarily. Now, that's probably a reduction in cancer. has to be. But I wonder if there's a piece of that that says, hey, if you have an extra 20 pounds of muscle on your body and you do get cancer and you do get treatment and the treatment's successful, you're less likely to die mm. from the muscle wasting or the body wasting effects of the treatment. Because if you've yeah. ever seen somebody go on cancer treatment- oh, yeah. well, they atrophy yeah, like crazy. Atrophy, they lose tons of muscle. But yeah. if you have muscle and strength more than normal to begin with, there's more, you have more- More room to lose. More room to lose. So I wonder if that plays a role at all. But it, hmm. it definitely, there's a reduction in just rat is in cancer as well. But very interesting. Now, right? do you yeah. do you predict that we're going to, in the near future, see doctors starting to yes. recommend this? 100%. By the I, way- I go back and forth on that, by the way. Why wouldn't they recommend it? Just because the risk factor, and we know that the like complexity, maybe. Yes, you know, and and because it, there's so many, there's so much red tape, like or with like when it comes to like the medical field and, mm -hmm. and just like certifications, right? All the stuff that we 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 learned in certifications, we've we've unlearned as, as we've gotten yeah. more experience, right? It's like, oh wow, you know, stopping my clients at 90 degrees on their squat or on their yeah. bench press was, you know, yeah, the certification taught us that for safety reasons, but I know that for overall joint health, that's not ideal. In fact, I would, should train my clients through its fullest their fullest range of motion. And so yeah. my fear is that 
even though the studies are continuing to point in this direction, and I know you highlight them all the time, and I want I want to believe that we're going to move in this direction, I still have a, a, a little hesitancy to come out and say, oh yeah, real soon here, doctors are going to be saying that because I feel like because of the red tape. Yeah, that's a good point. By the way, I do want to also add that uh, the, the combination of cardiovascular activity and strength training had the, the largest reduction of risk of mortality. So mm -hmm. um, uh, combining the two is is probably your best bet when it comes to longevity. But, you know, back yeah. to, um, you know, what you were saying, I think it's more of this. I think that cardiovascular activity on its face appears to be uh, more simple and easy to apply, right? Because the, mm -hmm. the belief is, oh, I'm going to go for a run. I just got to put on my shoes and go run. It's a lower barrier to entry. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, oh I'll just go run. That's not, that's not a problem at all. Now, Part of that is true. There's a there's a million and one different strength training exercises, and and you know you could do there's five different ways to do each one. So and some of it's true, but some of it's also false. There's a bit of a false belief that the simplicity of you know just getting up and run means that you're going to go do so and it's going to be okay and you're not going to hurt yourself and it's not going to be a problem. And I think that's why people uh, they take for granted, or they, I should say they have a misunderstanding that oh I just go run and it's not a big deal. Running is a skill like anything, and and I'm picking running because that's the most common one. If you just go and run, but you don't run well, you are going to hurt yourself. You are going to create your you know problems for yourself. Whereas with strength training, the understanding is it's more complex, so you probably have a little bit more respect going into it. I better use the know the right exercises. I better learn the right technique. But there is again, there's truth too because well, the, the, strength the, training programming is much more complex. The risks are a little different though, right? Like the the running, um, although uh, I would say a majority of people that just start running um, will encounter some sort of an injury. The injuries are typically minor and or chronic pain is what you mm -hmm. would get more more likely, like in the knees or the hips, like their shins are probably most common with that. Where the risk of really hurting like your back or something, you know, doing a deadlift or a squat improper is a much higher risk where you could actually really hurt something. Um, that's why that's why I'm worried about it never going that way because, yeah, you're right. Running can hurt you. I mean, if you have poor mechanics, which most people do have, but you know, what are we talking about? Shin splints, uh, you know, bursitis. Um, you know, chronic knee pain. Yeah. We're not talking about uh, you know, breaking your back, or we're not yeah. talking about yeah. But you know, you know don't you see this sort of wedge uh, in between all that in terms of like the tonal machine or one of these other like they try to figure out how to add resistance training in one setting that's like they try and simplify it for uh, you know, your everyday average person more so. Maybe that's like sort of the bridge into uh, resistance training where doctors will get behind that. Yeah, I mean, and again, we're thinking about like complex, you know, barbell exercise. Like the average person's like, there's some very basic exercises you could do. And also the data doesn't back the feeling that you have. Like if you look at the data, running creates more injuries oh, yeah. per number, person number one. than strength training. Right. And I don't think it's because of the potential, rather. I think it's the way it's treated. People tend to, you take the average person who's like, I'm going to try some strength training. Mm -hmm. They place more thought and caution on, I got to do this exercise right. Let me look it up. Let me make sure I'm doing the right technique. Let me do it slow and careful. Whereas the average person goes, I'm going to go run. I'm yeah, just going to run until I get tired. Yeah, part of that, though, is because the risk is higher. Because the 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 risk of doing a deadlift or a squat, I think it's the wrong. complexity that does it. They, they just don't know. People think they know with running. Yeah, but I mean, but con the complexity of it on on a movement like that, there's a higher risk of hurting yourself more than there is if you going potentially. Out in time. Yeah, yeah, potentially. But it doesn't end up. That and, and way. You're right. Statistically, yeah. you're right. I mean, we know yeah. what the. I mean, it's the reason why we are constantly kind of harping people about going out and running. It's yeah. not because we're anti-running. It's just that people think that that's a great form of exercise. My fear, again, though, is that the the doctors... But you bring up a good point. Is Maybe that's not squatting and deadlifting. Maybe we maybe like it becomes a thing where, where doctors start to promote like walking lunges. Yeah, you body know, weight like, squats. Yeah, right. Like instead, a push-up off the Right, camera. right. Let's do... You know, maybe it looks like this really basic body that's weight the type of... That's the direction it's going. Right. And, and I think the doctors yeah. will promote it when the studies become... And they're already doing this. The studies are starting to become overwhelming the evidence is becoming overwhelming and you know doctors w rely on the fact that science has to feel somewhat settled and somewhat established for the, before they start and, it, and they take a little longer right the fitness industry and the health industry is always on the cutting edge so we were the ones that were saying things like eh you know you should, butter's probably better than margarine and doctors were still following the old guidelines until the evidence became so overwhelming 
that they started to reverse, you know, kind of what they said. I think that we're probably 10 years away from strength training being uh, the reason why I, I titled the resistance training revolution that because I feel like it's coming anyway. I feel like there's going to be a revolution of the way people understand uh, and apply strength training. It's not going to be the, oh, that's just what bodybuilders do or, oh, don't do that. It'll get too big. I think the average person, we're pretty close to the point where the average person be like, oh, yeah, that's a great way to exercise for longevity. That is interesting. I was just thinking about that in terms of like, you know, clinical settings and yeah. you have these studies conducted where, you know, the gym setting, we have like clients that we've pulled data from and, you know, stuck with them for a really long period of time. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, by the hundreds, by the thousands, we have all of this data, but it's obviously not used by scientific community because it's anecdotal. Uh, yep. Whereas, and this is where we kind of start to formulate our own opinions. Like, hmm, I, I didn't really see that happen within my clients. No. And also it's part of the reason, by the way, I don't blame like the, the studies and stuff and say, oh, they were biased. It was, it's harder to study strength training than it is, you know, cardiovascular training. First of all, animal studies, you can put a rat on a treadmill, but you get a rat to lift weights, you got to get real creative to <laughs> figure that out, right? I want to see that. You know, uh, getting right. people, even, even studying uh, humans, right? Okay, if we're going to have them do resistance training, well, now we need to have a structure. We need to make sure, but if we just have them run on a treadmill, mm -hmm. it's easy to apply. So most of the studies done on strength training, uh, up until relatively maybe the last 10 years, were all done on athletics. So we knew it was great for athletics. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot of health studies. There was some, but not much. Now right. we're seeing lots of studies start to come out. We're starting to see that that weakness is a predictor of all-cause mortality, better than right. your ability to run on a treadmill. Even they're showing so uh, fascinating. So what, so what tips it over? You know what is what's going to what's going to need to happen? In M more studies like this. I mean, this just came out. Yeah. So more stuff like this is what's going to tip it over. Oprah you know, needs to take this and just run with it. You yeah, know, I know. She usually like starts it all. Yeah, and then you know, and celebrities uh, talking more about traditional strength training always yeah. helps, right? You know, give them credit because there's no. I know. I'm just it's it's. <laughs> I'm just thinking of like our generation yeah. growing up. It was always like somebody influential. I that know. Was like this is the way we all need to <laughs> well, do it. When we were growing <laughs> up, if, if you saw anybody in media that was like healthy. They didn't lift weights. Like, oh, that health person. They were a runner, a yeah. marathon runner. If I thought about lifting weights with popular media, it was Arnold, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, bodybuilders or like athletes. That was all you had. That yeah. was it. And But now it's starting to change a little. There's still a stigma, right? But it's starting to change a little bit. So that's, uh, you know, that's all that's pretty That's a good cool. point. I'm trying to think of besides like the Arnolds and Sylvester, like back in like the 80s and stuff, like who was like, dude, even, what were the body types besides that, right? Even pictures that or like the, the, the Cindy Crawford model. Yeah, like look, right? sizers, like, I guess. Yeah. That's like, a good it. point. Even right now, if you were, if media was to create like a avatar of this healthy, long living person they would show them doing yoga running totally. and th maybe that's it swimming or something like that yeah everything is super zen you yeah. know that they promote for longevity they wouldn't show strength training even though strength training is profoundly uh beneficial for longevity yeah. which is kind of you know what but again i think it's starting to change so it's good stuff mm. anyway i want to tell you guys a hilarious story about my my baby son who's turning out to be a little little tyrant Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.